We're back at Josh's house, or house, his <laughs> shop. And I don't know if you guys remember a while ago, this is Baron. He actually had me out to his suite at Coda. Right. It was awesome. So We're gonna do it again, I think this year. The vintage yes. race. You're number one on the list. Yes! Oh, <laughs> it's yes. my friend Eddie. Hey, this is Eddie. Hey, how are you? <laughs> Say hi to YouTube. And the reason we have this big ass trailer behind me is because <laughs> his 430's clutch is acting up. So Josh is gonna hook him up and get it taken care of. So we gotta get it out of this thing. Get it out of here. Which is an amazingly large and awesome car hauler. Holy crap, that is so badass. So you don't even have to put ramps or anything, you just no, drive it right, on. right on. Oh my god. Did you get your clutch from a Canby? I've got some parts in there that I ordered. I think there's some. Ah. Can't stop, won't stop. Can't stop, won't stop. So cool. Right. Now, well, you can actually get in. Yeah. Did it actually clear the wheel? Uh, so the I don't know. I didn't put it in here, but I think. Uh -huh. Oh, be so damned. Wow. The oil Clears out. everything. Well, Just uh, barely. Like <laughs> that's so cool. That's why I say yeah, yeah, yeah. You got like <laughs> two, not even two <laughs> fingers right there. Jeez. Does so it still go on its own? Sounds like there's something with a belt or something making a weird noise. It could be. Yeah, I, I got a new belt. Yeah? Yeah, I mean, I ordered this. Uh, huh. well, I think it was the kitchen. Did you hear that? It sounded like it was the, there was a, like the belt making a weird noise or something. I'm not talking about that cake. I think it was too. No, no, no. All right, where are we at? Oh, you're actually checking the lash? Yeah. Uh, there's actually some. Uh, uh, so all of them are in spec oh, so far, but. What are we at? Uh, these are eight to ten thousandths on the intake. Oh, okay. So how do you check it? Let's take a look at that. So there's shims beneath the uh, cam here on the lifter. And so you come in, shallow angle as possible, and just slide it between the cam lobe and the uh, and the shim. Okay. And you try to get the cams as vertical as possible to do it. This one has this problem. It's just normal. Oh, see that? Oh, yeah, a little warp. That's why you do the timing belt service. Yep. Oh, it, it actually knocked it? Yeah, it yeah. hit the valve. Oh, no. The valve skipped it too. Super it lucky it didn't impregnate that valve right, into a into piston the, or in right. a cylinder wall or a head. 0.08 to, to 0.1 so even if is I good, but on the, yeah, yeah, on the intake side. I'm still the guy, you know? Yeah. But we're going to replace the well, ones that are at 0.1 or we're going to replace the, to the shims system. because we want to get it back down to 0.08 yeah. so it starts at the lower end. It's and the, the exhaust valves will go 0.12 <laughs> or 0.012 to 0.014. Come 12 in. Uh, thousandths two. to yeah. 14 thousandths of one inch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the shims are all words. Don't ask me the rest two. of the maths. I yeah. messed up my maths last time you recorded me doing maths, so I'm going to end it right there. Uh, the shims are only in two thousandths steps. Oh, increments. In increments, uh. yep. So with the range being uh, eight to ten, right? If it's ten, we can make it eight. If it's nine, you can't make. Yeah, you can't do anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's not worth. Yeah, because then it'd with. be too small. Uh huh. So is 0 0.08 the preferred number? It is, in my opinion, eight thousandths to ten thousandths. I like eight thousandths. Generally, from what I see, the exhaust side tends to tighten on adjustment, whereas the intake side tends to loosen on adjustment. Plus, the intake side, if you run it a little bit tighter on the valve adjustment, it's almost like advancing the cam timing. And if you run the exhaust a little bit on the looser side, it's like retarding it. So you end up with a little <laughs> bit of extra overlap between the intake and exhaust. And it's kind of an old school trick for uh, spec series racing when you can't really modify things, but you're trying to find any power you can get out of it. <laughs> you can play with the valve adjustment range like this, and you're within factory, but you've you know maximized the uh, 
the VE, whatever you're, you know, <laughs> scavenging overlap, whatever, you know, however you want to talk about it uh, to the best of your ability. That's crazy. Yeah. That's cool stuff. Probably really doesn't matter. <laughs> You know, yeah, the, this is not gonna be raced and stuff. The power potential of this motor is way beyond where it's at right now, so yeah, this is not really gonna make a world of difference. The thought process I like to think it matters, <laughs> I like to work like it matters, regardless of how minute. So, so are we, if back. we're at 14, are we bringing him down to 12? Um, we're probably gonna leave those maybe because he wants the exhaust towards the Towards uh, the high side. side. Yeah. So about 15 we'll have to do. Yeah, then. that one will definitely have to come down. So yeah, it'll come 15. down to 13. All right. So what's the final verdict? Pretty good, actually. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, there's a couple of them we need to address. See, that's all good. So we got a couple tens on the intake side. Yeah, yeah. That we'll have to address. And then... Uh, those two 15s. Yeah, there's a couple 15s. And the rest of it, I think that's we're going to leave. Yeah. Oh, man. So two, four, six. Six. Yeah. six. Wow. Only six shims. Not bad. Hey. I'm happy. <laughs> it's easy. It's good shape. I am back in the director's chair doing absolutely nothing while Tim slaves over his computer. Or computer. That, geez, that shows you where my history of work has been. Turning that crank. I mean, so it's kind of a pain in the ass, but I mean, he's going to be saving 10, 20 grand. I mean, easy 10 grand for sure. So Up, upper you, end of a 20 grand, maybe 25. Where did you get this car from? Uh, Knoxville. Yeah. And you bought it specifically knowing that mm -hmm. yeah. it needed all these things. That's why he got it cheap as hell. Probably 15 grand off of what it's worth is what I paid for it, knowing that it needed this. And yeah. You paid more than 15 grand for it? No, I paid 15 grand. <laughs> <laughs> if you have an expert doing it, yeah, they could probably do it in two, three days. But we're going to probably take a month to do it because yeah. we're like chipping away a couple hours a day. Yeah. Basically getting three, four hours a day. Basically a Ferrari mechanic after listening to you. For yeah, yeah, minutes. sure. Let's just add some shit. <laughs> <laughs> Go from 10 to 8, no problem. So we pull off the the cam, what is it, cam lock or cam? Yeah, cam bearing. Bearing, yeah, there we go. And we're going to shove business cards in there. One thing to keep in mind when you do this is you always have to put the bearings back in the same right. location same and the same orders. orientation. Yeah, he said they're numbered. Oh, no. Yeah, I, I don't know how they're numbered. Oh, yeah, 15, 14, and there 13, should be what, 12. an arrow on there or something that shows which way they go. Oh. Wow. All right. You we just gave, it a, just gave it a wiggle, little tiny a little wiggle, yeah. So does it show you which way is up, which way is down? No, that's why I left it like that. Oh, okay. I'm well, sure it does, though. So the numbers are upside down on those ones. On the bottom, see what you're saying. Oh, it looks like they're right side up. So what is the business card? It locks the cams. It's basically just pinched the bearings so it can't move. Just oh, so we're say a chunk of business card. Mm, yep. Do you have to have a certain type of business card or any kind of work? I'm, I'm using an Opti-Free box. It's just a piece of card. <laughs> Literally, it's the high quality piece of cardboard. Wow. Hey, I just grabbed something that had cardboard when I left the house. So, so normally, Normally, like a Ferrari mechanic wouldn't have torn pieces of a box. Oh, He's right? going to use a tool, right? Yeah. What? I'm sure Ferrari There's probably has a five thousand dollar special tool. tool yeah. yeah, but sometimes that tool's yeah. not available yeah, or whatever. Sure. And they just or this is faster. Yeah, faster and probably does just. See, as good I think as that's the myth of all this like paying big bucks for the services. Is they're still humans and they're paint. Most of these jobs are flat rate, right? Right. right. So they're going to do whatever they can to do it as fast that's as possible. A, you're right. So if they can shove a piece of cardboard in there instead of probably building some big tool or whatever, yeah. throw in the cardboard. Who cares? I hope Are you going to have the cardboard or we need to get you oh, some yeah. more? Okay. Yeah, we just need to do one cam on each side, right? Uh, no, you have to do all four. Oh, all four. Okay. Yeah. So it takes four business card pieces to hold that cam. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, eight so much today. Eight oh, that's right. I doubled, eight it up. You're doing the <laughs> I doubled it up for thickness. That's too funny. Um, when I was 14, I told myself that someday I would own an Italian exotic, which in my mind meant Ferrari. And so uh, I actually bought a, um, a Maserati about three years ago and then upgraded to a Gran Turismo. But the dream was always a Ferrari. And so I started seeing these that were close to being in my price range. 
and so I stumbled on this one just searching the internet and uh, but it, you, it so said, you weren't intimidated by what it's going to take to fix it. Dan stepped up and offered exactly. to help exactly that was my point I was getting to go along yeah. Daniel's the reason why I yeah. bought that fourth service. I had nothing to do with this yeah, you did. Yeah, no you do, do not blame me no, for dude, your problems it's actually a funny story because I called Dan and I told him that I found this and I said but you know it, it needs a freaking major service yeah and uh and how did you and dan meet um his license plate yeah <laughs> cars and coffee like two years ago i saw his license plate on the 430 and loved it and i was like i gotta talk to this guy and so yeah and then we just started seeing each other at events and stuff and well dan is like that he, he's like a drug that just sneaks in there and just, before you know it you're addicted and then we really started um with the Maserati, we did that yeah, video on the I major thought. service on yeah, the Maserati. Yeah, I remember yeah. that. One. And so since yeah. then, it's just kind of, he's been a bad influence and spending my money. I am an amazingly bad influence. And it was funny when I when I called him. I was like, hey, Dan, you got a few minutes? I need to talk to you. He's like, that's funny. Meg and I were just talking about you. She, she was saying you need to do more Maserati yeah, videos because it's. Your money. Yeah. And I was like, well, that's really interesting because I'm kind of looking at a 348, but it needs a major. What do you think? He's like, I hear Meg in the background. Buy it! Uh, now his wife is fully, fully addicted. Yeah, so I'm like, all right. So, yeah, that's yeah. especially the price. Yeah. And then you said the yeah. price. I was like, dude, you have to. Yeah, I mean, the guy if he wasn't going to buy it, I was going to find some way to buy it because well, you could turn around and, and do this service and flip the car. Yeah. Well, it's, you know, Dan has so much incredible power and he doesn't even realize it because you know, I have the power. Dan could have said, I don't have any earthly idea how to do that. But once he says, yeah, sure, go get it. It gives you the confidence to go get it. Admittedly oh, on this, though, the, the ace up our sleeve is standing right there. Because we, and Rikambi. And Rikambi. Straight up. No, Rikambi. We were, we were I, I'm not a rich yeah. man. No, I'm, I, well, I'm, a, I'm a public servant, so I don't make a lot yeah. of money. There's exactly. been times where I didn't even need parts, and I called them just to talk to them. <laughs> Can I help you? No, just call. I'm just gonna call. They send you little candies. They're really good yeah. to deal with. Yeah. yeah. So they they've absolutely. No, they they I mean, fucked us I, I up beyond still, what we I even thought. Still done it, but it would have it would have been financial. Hurt a little bit yeah. more. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I, mean, I still would have done it, but then they <laughs> rogered up for all the parts, and I was like, Yeah, we didn't we didn't even know for sure. Because we hadn't talked to them, right, we're right. like, well, we hope they'll. And hilariously, you know, so Daniel Pass from Recanvi loves 348s because he's had them. Yeah. So when we told him we were gonna do this, he was like, yes, yes, do it. <laughs> well, you, it's amazing how you get no nos. Everybody's yes. Yeah. Well, because it's cool. I mean, it is cool. No, it is. Like, I mean, here's the thing: is unless we absolutely totally flub this, we're not gonna do any harm. Correct. That can't be fixed. That's right. Well, totally flub it. We could smash some valves or something. Jinxed. Loosen your uh, the tensioners. tensioners. Yeah. yeah, loosen your tensioners. All right. And uh, take your slack off your belts and pop your belts off the cam. Okay. And then we'll pull the cams out one by one. Yeah. There's cards under all those? Well, no. just no, no under just one each. On. Oh, one, one card will hold that. Oh, yeah. Well, because there's only one and a half thousandths of clearance between oh, the caps and that. So the card, you know, is way thicker. That you put plus, you know, the the paper has a lot of grip to it. Right. So when you mash it in, is there, there a special tool to lock the cams normally? You just used it. Okay. That's we were asking wow, about that. Yes. Yeah. I'm sorry. Usually, I use one of my old business cards where it says <laughs> master technician yeah. on it and I that's, put that in there. Yeah. Yeah. So what you're saying yeah. is this will probably break because we didn't use the official piece of paper. It didn't say master I hope not. Sometimes what I'll do is uh, you loosen it and then collapse it and then tighten it. Oh, there it goes. There we go. Come on. Uh, Woo. Nice. Now, now, don't worry about that anymore for now. <laughs> well, what I was wondering is, why do two of them have fences on the outside and two don't? Or are these on backwards? No. So no. it's inner, outer. Oh, so it they, keeps okay. The, All right. One's pushing it one yeah. way, the one's uh, pushing so it the other way. So the belt, so belt stays. So the belt stays on track. And we got the new water wow, pump going. That is. You can even hear it. Yeah, you can hear it. That is not. Yeah, they recommend replacing the water pump every time you do a major on these. Oh, that is, uh, that is not feeling that too good. That was a good, good. call. Yeah. Because, <laughs> uh. That doesn't sound right either. I think we're replacing these, oh, right? That? 
That was a ton of tension. Oh. They feel the water pump. Listen yeah, so this was pump. probably about ready to go. Yeah. So all three of these are getting replaced. Yeah. The, yeah, you said it wasn't the belts, the, it's the, the tensioners and stuff. Um, but you there you go. Tension. You actually drove it? Yeah. I did like five miles on a test drive when I bought it. It was just, yeah. I'd already bought it, but I wanted to drive it. Yeah. And so I, I drove it like five miles and then I went did around my neighborhood. Did you tell there's a problem or? No, you didn't it ran perfectly. Yeah. Oh, uh, well. well <laughs> I'm probably going to disagree. <laughs> there's a good chance it probably did not run perfectly. It probably ran good enough that you didn't notice it didn't run perfectly, oh. but I doubt it ran perfectly. So, wow. what the, hell? the hell is that? These. Oh, like are specifically for holding cam gears Holy they're crap. nylon teeth so that way you can't damage anything holy shit so so you grab that Whoa. and you freaking spin the nuts up? no oh nope. no you don't take those nope. off these guys are on at like 75 foot pounds this or one's something flopped so what you're going to want to do right to take the cams out is you're gonna slowly yes, you pull your back caps back. off mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so now with your pliers you can hold the cam you know when you get to that point where you start loosening the one with the paper card i usually leave the card tail hanging out so that way i know which cap it is there you go you got two things that are going to happen right it's going to start lifting but it's not going to lift evenly because you have some valves that are open and some that are closed okay so like if you look at this intake here on cylinder three yeah. your lobes are all the way down so if you were to start taking these off you're going to watch the cam start kind of kind of bending and the valves are going to start pushing the cam up you know all wonky and at one point especially up here you're going to run into trouble because you're going to have this flange jammed into your cam cap and you're going to have to you know you're going to mar it up trying to pull it off so I usually like to pull the front one off first because it can be the most problematic. Pull that one off and then pull the one with the card off. And then I would start working these two off Just, slowly. Okay. Yep. Until you feel kind of the, the tension on the valve springs relieve and then take the last one off. But, you know, when you get to that point where you're pulling the one with the card off, you can hold it like this. So the other cams are all going to stay safely at TDC and you hold the one you're removing so that way that one doesn't kick on you and do something you don't want it to do okay so do you do one at a time pull it replace it and put it back in no no you just pull no. them all out yep we're gonna pull them all out one by one because then we're gonna swap out the shims that we want to swap out you're gonna clean everything we're gonna redo the o-rings and the cam seals and then we're gonna put them all back together one by one when we get to that point because right now you don't we have cam seals and o-rings and all of i that. do Oh, okay. Yeah, I already have that. Okay, cool. We huh. get, no, we want them all out because when we go to bump the crank pulley off and take this pulley off, it's really, really difficult to keep the uh, crank from rotating any amount. So it's good to have all the cams out. So if okay. it does rotate, you're, you're not, not gonna hit any valves. Cool. You know, they're all closed and it doesn't matter. We can spin this motor <laughs> as long as we feel like it and it won't affect, okay. won't affect anything, you know, expensive. So that's why we'll pull them all four out and set them on the bench. All right. Exciting. Yeah. You're getting to the expensive stuff now. Well, I'll Timo. say now is where if you screw up it starts yeah. going bad. Yeah. Josh is like, this is where the entertaining part starts. Yeah. Uh, I don't like seeing your old men cry. <laughs> oh, you would too. <laughs> no kidding. I mean, I'd probably cry too. Just so you know, even if you did, you wouldn't be the first. You wouldn't be the first one I saw. Flip, flip the plier around. It's does it see how the teeth are offset, so mm. that way your plier can clear the other gear. Those are really good. That's a good tool. <laughs> it is. I was really excited when I stumbled across those because I worked on these for many years before I stumbled across those pliers. What did you use before that? I honestly don't remember. Now, mm. now I've had them for several years. I don't really remember how I tried to do it before. So that right, oh, that's the one with the shim there. So. You said that um, these caps are numbered, so I don't have to mess with them, or you yeah, want me to put them look, back on? Yeah, if you you don't even need to ask. If you look, should be, there's. yeah, there you go. See that? Number nine? Yeah. Number nine. If you see, not only is it stamped, but they're stamped in the same direction, because... It tells you the direction and the number. Yeah, the guy assembled it, you know, the cylinder head, and honed them all, and then punched the numbers all together. So like this one here, you can see the sevens are aligned. Okay. 
this is not a matter of hustling and hurry up and getting it done. This is a matter of being very mindful of what you're doing and not making a silly mistake that, you know, you deeply regret. You know, like scratching and denting a cam. Bending a cam, bending a valve. So you take the ones that don't have valves currently being pushed off first and then work on the one that's got the pressure on it. Yeah, and then the two caps on either side of that one, walk them out. Like left, right, left, right, left, right? Yeah. Okay. These ones are up, those ones are up, this one's down, Here, let me move that my one's hand. almost down. So what, this is the one that we're concerned about. So now we walk it off a little bit. Yeah, there's tension on it too. Yep. And steady out. Oh, yeah, it's glued in. This just pulls straight up, right? Because it's kind of glued. I don't want to do anything stupid. Yeah, it's literally glued. Okay. It's just the only. Okay, there you go. I didn't want to do anything stupid. There it is. Yep. Stand it straight up on the cam gear. Yeah. And then if I were you, I would stack them in line, you know, as they come out. Yeah. You know what I mean? So when you pull this exhaust cam out, Put yeah, it probably. on that side. Yep. Yeah, that way you've got some kind of sequence to reference. So grab that cam seal cap. So a lot of times on these early cars, you know, shops, people, they talk about uh, okay. oil leaks and cam cover leaks and cam seals leaking. Got the groove. The radial seal, the cam seal is really pretty good quality. It's not very common that this leaks. Usually you either get the corners of the paper gasket that leak because you got to hand trim them and it's not real easy to do and it's not precise. But the most common one is... That, oh yeah, there's a little split. The O-ring there. Oh, so yeah. the O-ring obviously gets caught under tension between the cylinder head and the cam cover cap, mm, right? So yeah, when it squishes, it squishes out and as you torque it down you can pinch it so one of the things we're going to do i was taught this many years ago we're going to take little mini mini baby files and see how sharp machine these edges are and take little files and we're just going to radius these edges ever so gently both here and on the um on the cam cover okay and that's the other reason why i like the silicone the uh, the O-rings part of it is to help them to keep from leaking. The other part is is the silicone will work as a lubricant, you know, because it's wet. So when we assemble it, it should help also, you know, reduce the probability of that uh, getting caught. So we'll do a couple things like that to help put it back together. That groove in the bearing right there mm -hmm. lines up with the oil groove that we were talking and about. So that's that the so hole. hole's already there, right? Yeah, that's the. Drain so we hole. don't need to drain it or well, uh, drill it. I think he drills them oversized, doesn't he? With that tool, we can we can measure it and see how large it is and see how it compares to the uh, to the tool. Mm -hmm. I mean, as you can see, your motor didn't have a cam belt service for ten years, and it's not exactly hemorrhaging oil everywhere. And those O rings were cut on assembly, so mm -hmm. that's why I was saying, you know, need it. yeah, on these later motors, from my experience, it's not super necessary. We just do some things like radiusing these yeah. edges and. And siliconing it and assembling it nicely, and it should be fine. That's it, but you ain't gonna die. Got it. Um, yeah. My goodly works. <laughs> All right. Cool. Woo. Okay, to take this off. What is, yeah, that plastic cover? Yep. yep. Cool, thank you. All right, on to the other intake. Oh, we're pulling off the tensioner? Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> Figures, right? <laughs> so we just, oh, now I just gotta knock that back in place. There it goes. There, there you go. <laughs> now put those screws back. We'll be like, Tim, we you solved your problem. All right, where are we at? Where are we at? Water pump. Water pump. Nice. Right. We're going to be a little bit of water in there, probably. Yeah, it could be. We do have a rubber mallet. A rubber, a rubber mallet. There you go. Put your hands. Start to go. Did it move? Nope. Didn't move at all. 
Oh, there we go. Got Shot it. me. <laughs> ah. Hey, uh, did you guys? Just me. All right, we're pulling the. Drink. Oh, oh, shit! No, oh, no! Is it in your face again? Yeah. <laughs> I am so glad. I... <laughs> he knew. <laughs> <laughs> God, that's dude. why. That's why you're waiting. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we, we, we need to get suspicious every time Josh stands around. <laughs> if he <laughs> just hovers, I know something bad's happening. Well, yeah. Didn't he say this is entertaining at the very beginning of this? Yeah, <laughs> he did. He yeah. told me that's all. He told me that's the whole reason he's letting me do it here. Uh oh, that's getting pretty full. Oh shit! Yeah. Uh, well, that's just going further. There you go. Now you can set it down. There you go. <laughs> Sorry, Tim. <laughs> now you're a sticky mess. Oh. This reminds me of when I was in the GM dealership, my first professional wrench job, and you gotta drop the pan on an automatic transmission with no drain plug, and the old guys are like, Yeah, go ahead and do that. <laughs> <laughs> Five quarts of ATF all over the front of me. I did that three times before I figured out you dump it the other way. That's a moving at least. That's because you still got a screw in there. Uh, yeah. Look at that. Once you remove all the bolts, it actually does come. Quack. Amazing, isn't it? Amazing. That's why I always start with the rubber hammer first. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, yeah, it's still got the old shitty plastic one. Yeah, the updated Recambi one actually has a metal impeller with um, curved vanes. With curved vanes wow, for efficiency. Because yeah. so these way are not. They say that these cavitate above 5,000 RPM. Oh, I can see it, yeah. Don't forget that bolt down there. It's Allen. That's important. Yeah, I've got several. I put all the bolts back in there. You can the oil in it. Yeah. It's just dirt, isn't it? Yeah. It's just probably so. had a couple different kinds of coolants in it, and it's probably a little bit of buildup, you know, a mineral buildup from inside the motor. Wow. Gotta get that last pulley off. Hmm. We'll see. Sawzall! What up for the night? <laughs> I'm beat, yeah. Dude, you are coated in crap. Oh, uh, yeah. Signs of a successful night. That's gonna wrap it up for tonight. Yeah, it's a whole bunch of that got here. the whole yeah. all the cams yeah. out. Got the front, front end off. What's next? You should go oh, magnet. Oh, okay. We go home. All right. Well, in that case, do we have much more tear down. Oh yeah, we gotta still pull off all that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, not much. All right. That pulley, that pulley, and, and pull the front plate. All right. Oh, got dark quick. All right, guys. We're out of here. We'll see you tomorrow.